Oh, 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 mama, girl, it. My baby girl so pretty, she the coldest in the soul. Every time I check my mentions, her comment on my pictures. She the sickest for a second, baby, Leo. Hi, my beautiful YouTube friends. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. If you are new, welcome to the team. I don't know why you're here, but I'm glad you are. So I hope you stay a while. I need to start introducing myself for people who are new. Just uh, just jumping right into it. My name is Danny. I make videos about movies, makeup, and motherhood. So I'm mukbanking every once in a while. Maybe some fashion hauls. Really just whatever I want to talk about. But my main focuses are movies, makeup, and motherhood. So if any of that interests you, make sure you hit the subscribe button and join my team. So today is a movies and makeup video. And I'm going to talk about the highly discussed movie Malignant by one of the greatest horror movie directors of our generation james wan and it's currently streaming on hbo max if you haven't seen it yet what are you waiting for if you have hbo max go watch it now if you don't have it they have free trials like check it out because this movie pretty crazy and it is not what you think it's gonna be i'm gonna get right into it and we're gonna talk about malignant while i do my makeup so let's get into it oh and by the way please don't mind the hair i don't know <sighs> natural hair woes we're just gonna just pretend it's flourishing okay okay, okay i'm trying to get close without getting too scary face is primed eyebrows of course always done off camera oh starting off with my milani two in one you already know well maybe you don't if you're new but yeah milani two in one foundation concealer that's why I'm going for a foundation. So Malignant is about a woman named Madison who after suffering a head injury at the hands of her abusive husband starts to see visions of people dying and actually turns out she's witnessing the crime scenes like witnessing the murders as they're happening but she's trying to like figure out like what's going on the police are trying to solve the case. A lot of her past begins unraveling and the entity that is causing these murders isn't what you think it is that is the basic synopsis i'm going to start off not spoiling but probably get into spoilers eventually because this movie's crazy and we just have to talk about all the craziness that is malignant try to start off with things i like try to start with things i hated try to start off with the tropes that are in this movie so i'm gonna start with saying <coughs> puberty i'm gonna start with saying that the feedback the reception that Malignant has got has been like hot and cold. Some people love it, some people absolutely hate it, but I'm actually pretty in the middle. Like a lot of people think that there's no middle ground, like you either love it or hate it, but I'm pretty, like I don't hate it, but it's not like top tier horror movies for me personally. It was pretty interesting, but it was, there's a lot to unpack in this movie. So I think I'm gonna start off with talking about the horror movie tropes that are in this movie that I absolutely hate it. <laughs> So, as I'm just talking about that, I'm going with my ColourPop Freddy Fresh Concealer to conceal. The first horror movie trope that I absolutely hated was the big ass house for only a couple. Like, I hate when it's like a horror movie and it's only like one person or a couple living in the house, but it's a big ass house like you don't need all that house like i don't understand why the house is so big and it's like you can just tell the way the house look it looked like a creepy horror movie house and then after the beginning she's in the house by herself and then she keeps denying like her sister keeps wanting to like stay with her and for the longer she was like denying her sister coming to stay with her and she was staying in this big ass house by herself and it's like why can't they just live in like a ranch style home or it's like a, a one-story building why gotta be this big ass house no wonder things go bump up the night because you can't see everything in this big ass house because it's huge there was even a scene and i think they kind of made a nod to the fact that this house is huge where she like runs through the house and you get this aerial aerial view which is actually a pretty cool shot of her running through this house to get back up to her room and it's like this long journey from the front of the house to her her room and it's like why is this house so big i'm gonna try to go in order for when these like tropes kind of happen kind of stay you know consistent with the movie so like if y'all watching as y'all watch the movie y'all can like follow along next trope that i hate is the whole cop is attracted to or falls in love with a character like what what does that do like what 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 value does that bring 
to the movie especially this movie it didn't really play out to mean anything like the cop that's investigating the case you can tell he's like attracted or thinks like madison's sister sydney is attractive why 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 create that character tension or character whatever you want to call it like it, they never played out on it so it's like what what's the point of that and i just have a hard time finding that in these crazy ass cases there's always like a hot cop on the case like i don't know about y'all in y'all city but there's not too many attractive cops that you come across why is the cop always attractive it's not even just in horror movies it's like and clickbait like first of all what are the odds that the detective work of her case was somebody she matched with on the dating site where this isn't the clickbait review i kind of want to do a clickbait review it's too late like yeah, let me know if i should do one why just why just why just why while we're on the topic of the cops this might just be a bashing of cops at this moment when the cop gets a lead like the main detective working the case he gets a lead like oh he's of course working late because his partner is so tired the partner has to leave so he's by himself working on the case and he gets a lead why don't they ever call for backup like if they're going to like a sketchy area that they want to check out as a lead for this case that they know is dangerous people are dying there's a murder out why would you not call for backup he goes to this sketchy ass building by himself and ends up confronting the killer and in the midst of like tracking him down at no point does he call her back up you really thought you could take this person down by yourself and even if you thought you could why would you not call her back up for somebody to help you in case you can't or in case you're in a dangerous situation or you're walking into a trap i don't i don't get it i don't get it i don't understand now i'm going with my now i'm going in with my maybelline fit me loose finishing powder in deep as i continue my bashing of cops in this movie so let's not even talk about the cops with the bad freaking aim why is it that cops in horror movies always have bad aim cops in any movie always have bad aim the amount of missed shots these cops took when confronting the villain none of y'all have aim but y'all can do shooting practice with black you know what so on with the cops of the with the bad aim i guess that adds on to them having bad aim is there's always a character with like superhuman abilities why did the why did the antagonist in this movie have superhuman abilities because once you get into it you'll realize they're not really it's not like a spirit Oh, I'm getting into spoilers. Sorry. Spoiler, spoiler. I'll get into it. But the fact that this this character has superhuman abilities just doesn't 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 make sense to me. Like where does these superhuman superpowers come from? Like it's never really explained in these movies. Like what's T? What's what's that about? Yeah. I don't want to get makeup on your cute eye, man. He's not cute. Yeah. That's you. That's you. Hi. Oh, going back to the cop that does the call for backup when he goes to a sketchy place. How about the character that decides to go investigate an abandoned mental hospital, asylum, orphanage, sketchy ass old building by themselves at nighttime? I understand the movie, it was a point where she didn't trust the cops, but you have nobody else you can call to go with you to investigate this <laughs> mental hospital. Make that make sense. It doesn't. But luckily, it played out differently than you expect it to play out. But still, it happens in the movie so much that it's like, ha. Oh. All this really caused the eye roll for me, and all this really just made the movie cheesy. And that's why I think a lot of people call it campy or cheesy. Because there were scenes like these, like tropes like these, that made it really, really freaking cheesy. Okay, I think I have complained a decent amount. So let's go into things that I like as I do what I have. I'm going to try to do a dual separate looks because if you've seen the movie you know why <laughs> all right started with my morphe 3502 palette i'm going with a brown so one thing i will say that the movie did right and i say all thanks to king james Wan, the cinematography like one thing he knows how to do is produce a good movie like visually like the cinematography was really good very enjoyable to watch like i said the scene of her running through the the house like the aerial view was a thing of very powerful and a good touch like it ma it was made it really interesting to look at like kept her attention throughout that scene but can you really expect any less from james wan like i said it's king james wan all right i'm going with the only but a goodie the Too Faced chocolate gold because i want to go for a neutral but gold ish Hi. Oh, I have a note on a part about the effect of her face during a fight scene, but I want to save that for a spoiler. So y'all remind me to bring that up later. Along with the cinematography, the background music, the score was really, really good. And I usually don't notice things like the music or the score of movies, but that's something that really stuck out to me. Like it was different. It wasn't your typical horror movie music. Like it was like a remix version of it. Like it'd be the creepy music, but a twist to it. I really liked that. So yeah, I thought it was interesting that I noticed that. And I was actually watching, you know, my favorite possessed by horror. And she actually mentioned how she liked the score. So 
thought that was interesting that that's something I noticed for the first time like ever. And it's something she noticed that she had in her list of things she actually liked. So. Another thing that I really liked was the twist. Because it really was not what you would probably expect it to be. Like the whole movie I was like eyes rolled thinking I knew how this was going to end. Just waiting for it to be over. Like I really thought it was like your typical supernatural possession horror movie. And it is absolutely not that. And I really, I really like that because... You get tired of seeing the same thing. Even when I saw previews, I was like, I don't think I'm going to like it. It looks like the same thing you always see. Like, how, how are they going to make it different? And it really showed that everything is what it's seen. And, like, the whole last half was probably my favorite part of the movie. I know some people, like, like the first half. But that's what I thought was boring. I thought the first half just seemed like your, your stereotypical, like I said, possession horror movie. You know what's going to happen. You know what's possessing you. Why? Why she's possessed yada 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 it ended up not being that i will say at some point in the last half it did get kind of predictable like you kind of saw where it was going in a way but it was still like intriguing to see it play out and to actually see if like what you thought was actually absolutely right i had an idea of what it was but even my idea of what it was wasn't fully what it was it's just pretty what? now we're gonna get into the second half of my face and talk about things i didn't like and i'm pretty sure that my things i didn't like list yes way longer than my things i liked which is crazy because i actually really fully like enjoyed the movie but there was a lot of things that i didn't like let's start with the smallest thing i didn't like bangs bangs what is going on with bangs like, are bangs coming back like is it did they never leave and i'm just one at the loop like what like what like what's tea tell me what's going on because if they are i'll cut me some nice little little china bang i ain't opposed but it's like i keep seeing characters with bangs no like significant standout bangs from back to clickbait pia and clickbait everybody talks about her bangs to madison as a kid had bangs madison as an adult had the same bangs madison's sister sydney had bangs madison's birth mom has bangs like it's the bangs like it is it was noticeable it's not like a small i mean it's a small part that i didn't like it's a minuscule detail but it's, it was enough for me to notice that like everybody had bangs i don't know why that bothered me i think it really was masking her as a child having the same bangs she has as an adult that just didn't seem realistic i don't know I'm, I'm I'm picky. Another thing I didn't like was the first half of the movie. Let me get into what I'm doing. I'm going in with the Blade and Wild Wicked liner. I'm going to try to do a dramatic, like, graphic liner on this other eye. So the first half of the movie was definitely a slow burn. So it seemed like the stereotypical, the typical supernatural possession movie. So it was boring. The first half was boring to me. Like, I really was lucky falling asleep because I was watching it at night after work. But when it flipped, when it flipped to the twist, it, it flipped. It switched up and it was. I started to like it after it like hit, like when it was getting to the big reveal of what the twist was. Also, what I didn't like was the lack of like true character development. Like I didn't really like we didn't really get a full like explanation of these characters. We couldn't like really bond. Like everything happened kind of so fast and it was kind of like I don't know. I just really didn't find a connection with any of the characters, and it ends on the like we're sisters i'm all you needed we will forever be sisters type of no like moment it was like a very sentimental emotional ending but it was just, i was just kind of like um oh, that is that it like i didn't care about their bond as sisters because they didn't really develop their bond to make us feel their connection you never even really seen them like interact in a loving sisterly manner like when we were first introduced to sydney it gets brought up that they were estranged because her husband was abusive and kept her from his kept her from her family so why should we care about your sisterhood Yes, like y'all barely even sisters. We didn't get to see y'all grow up together to see like how y'all were close at one point, but then y'all grew apart when she got married and now y'all back together so your bond is back strong. Like we didn't see any of that. So it wasn't like anything we fell in love with or felt emotionally connected to. And I like to feel emotionally connected to movies, even horror movies. Along with that, you're supposed to believe that Sydney didn't know her sister was adopted. I understand with them being kids, you don't want to like, you know, spring that on your kids or like bring that topic to kids, but twenty something years later it never got brought up like i never why is it the family secret and y'all are like grown women like you're a big age you never knew your sister was adopted that's hard to believe to me i mean you can just you can just tell this ain't no black household because the black household you find out all the family teen secrets when you turn 18 honey when you turn 18 you can go to jail you can buy cigarettes and you can sit at the big people's table so you know all the family secrets it's like a rite of passage in the black households like if you know what i'm talking about like this video like leave a like if, if, if what i'm saying is facts like, i know i'm telling the truth all right let me get to this liner i'm just really just talking and i don't even know how to do a graphic liner
So I think now I'm getting to like the discussion portion of the movie because so I'm gonna get into the spoilers. I don't wanna say too much because I don't wanna like fully ruin the movie. I think everyone should still watch it, but this is definitely the spoiler section. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I have timestamps where I go to like my final thoughts of the movie after this. So go ahead and fast forward there. I'm using the Maybelline Sky High mascara for this. I only gonna do lashes because I just really don't feel like it. I guess it's actually going to like a part that I didn't like. No, it'll go into both because I like the twist but there's just like plot holes to me. So the twist is Madison is doing the killing but it's not really her and she can actually see what's going on because she's actually there. She has I forgot what they called it. I'll put it down here, like what the actual term for the birth defect is. But it's something like a conjoined twin, if you will. And he was like, in the back of her head, like her spine, they were connected and he was evil. Because he, I don't know, he was just mad at the world because he wasn't a fully formed person, I guess. I don't know why he was so angry, but he was the one causing all the problems when they were younger. Because at the beginning of the movie, it shows like the 90s, the little mental hospital, and they're like... There's a crazed patient who's like killing everybody and yada yada yada. Like killing the nurses, doctors, they can't get control of him. So they decide to cut out the cancer. And cutting out the cancer is removing her conjoined sibling. His name was Gabriel. But they couldn't separate them at the head because it would either kill her or cause her to be brain dead. So he kind of like just tucked him in to her skull and sewed her up and had her forget that she had a crazy conjoined attached at the head brother. That's why she can't remember anything from when she was eight to after she was adopted to like now. So my thing is, like I like the twist because it was different. Like you don't really see anything like that. I haven't really seen anything where it's like, you'll see one where it's like the person who you think is innocent is actually doing the killing. This actually had me like, it couldn't be her. But in a way it's kind of like, how can she see what's going on? Like what kind of superpowers does she, like what kind of supernatural power does she have? I know some people guessed that she was the one doing the killing, but I don't think they guessed it was because she has a conjoined sibling. I like that aspect. I thought, well, like I said, it's really different. However, why does Gabriel have powers? Like, why can he, like, project himself into, like, radios and electrical devices? Why does he have superhuman strength where he could, like, break her back? Like, turn her body backwards and she doesn't break any bones? And can fight up the whole police force with no problem. This is a woman's body. Like, how can, like, how, like, uh, how? Just how? Just how? So in a way, it was still kind of supernatural, but they try to play it like it's not a supernatural, like it's not a pos possession type of movie. But it kind of is. I just, that, that part I didn't really get because there was nothing to really say that he was like superhuman. It seemed like he was just like a non fully formed inf you know, person oh but that was thanks for reminding me guys that was the part i was going to bring up about the effect of like her face during a fight i did like that um and i heard from possessed by horror they did practical effects no cgi which is kind of interesting i liked how you can see like as she's fighting or has as gabriel's fighting the police you can see her face still behind him and it's just like, I don't know. I thought that effect was really cool. And it really just showed, I don't know the word I'm looking for. I, it was really interesting that you could really see like what's really going on. Like she has no control of her body. This is literally another person taking her over. And that she also got revealed that he was the one that was killing. Because she had, had multiple miscarriages. And it turned out that he was the one like stealing the life, the life source from her embryos. And caused her to miscarry because he was trying to like grow back. Oh, and her hitting her head what woke him up because like I said he was in the back of her head. So when he, her husband like pushed her head against the wall, that's what like woke him up and opened up her head to like him come back and taking over. Which, why did the hospital, she didn't go to the hospital at some point. Why did the hospital not check back her head? What, what kind of neglectful hospital, negligent hospital was she at? That was weird. And I just found it really crazy that in the end, the one thing that like, helped her fight back and get back control of her body was her sister revealed that he was the one that was killing her babies and shout out to a mother's strength i'm glad that's what woke her up it's kind of like oh nothing else made you want to like get back control like that that i guess tapped into her emotions enough for her to get strong enough to fight him off you didn't get those feelings when he was like masking a whole police squad and also that one like what happens in the end like, does she go to jail because she's the one doing the killing? Does she get off because it technically wasn't her? Like, how? 
it ended without us getting that kind of answer because like how how what who what happens i don't know i think i'm being a little too technical but seriously like what happens in the end did she just get away with it and what the hell happened to shaw he was a detective on the case and in the end he got like knocked away by gabriel but i don't think he died but that was that was that was it did he die i don't I just feel like Shaw deserved a better closure than just that. I'm about to finish up with lips with my NYX just brown lip liner and I don't know what kind of ooh, I don't know what kind of lipstick I'm wearing yet. I don't know. I'll come back and get my final thoughts after I decide on what that's gonna be. Okay, all done. I end up using NYX butter gloss and spike toffee for my lips. Nothing too crazy, just really kind of plain. All in all, even with all the things that I dislike, said the things that I found cheesy. I like the movie. I don't hate it. I don't really dislike it. It's not a favorite, but you know, I I, en I enjoyed it from like you know the climax on to the second half. But I did like it. Um, everyone's talking about it being like a cult classic film. I don't know about that one. I don't know. People really, 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 really love this movie. I don't see that, <laughs> but it was a decent movie. I will give it that. James Wan. I was thought he was gonna be like stuck in a rut of being like predictable and the same type of horror but yeah he was able to like switch it up on us and give us something unexpected that i think we needed in this horror world of this new generation i think everybody should give it a shot and watch it and make their own judgment if you like horror movies i think you should give it a try like literally it's not what you thought i thought going in that i knew how it was going to end and what it was about from the trailer it's not that at all and like i said so many people really like this movie and it actually makes me want to rewatch it because i think i'm missing something because people like i said love 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 love, love. this it's developing a cult following like i said people love this movie so i feel like i'm going to watch it again just to get an idea maybe i'll love it more the second time around but yeah i think y'all should watch it if you haven't already and let me know what y'all think after y'all watch it Leave me in the comments what y'all think. If you have seen it, leave me in the comments now what y'all thought about the movie. I'm doing my dual look. Half Madison, half Emily. Half Gabriel. Little drama. Girl. Let me know what y'all think of everything. Of my makeup look, of my review, of the movie. We can just you know, have a look key in the comment section. And I'll be back with another review soon let me know when movies are coming out that you want me to review and talk about thank y'all so much for watching and until next time stay beautiful